Hello my dear students have you ever wondered how flowers turn into fruits or how tiny seeds carry the magic of life within them today we are exploring into the incredible process of sexual reproduction in flowering plants nature's beautifully coordinated dance between male and female reproductive parts unlike asexual reproduction this mode of reproduction needs two gametes one from the male part or pollen and the another one from the female part or ovule when they meet something extraordinary happens a new life begins packed in a seed ready to grow inside into a whole new plant you will discover or you will explore how flowers are not just pretty faces they are highly specialized structures for plant reproduction from pollination and fertilization to fruit and seed formation this journey is packed with such fascinating steps and smart strategies plants use to reproduce and survive so grab your curiosity and let's step into the blooming world of flowering plants where science and beauty go hand in hand introduction into sexual reproduction in plants most flowering plants can reproduce both sexually and asexually in sexual reproduction flowers are the uh, reproductive organs they originate from the floral buds which are present either terminally at the tip of the shoot or it can be axillary in the leaf axils role of flower in reproduction flowers produce gametes female gametes they are ova or egg cells and male gametes are sperms key stages of sexual reproduction maturation of gametes pollination transfer of male gametes to female gametes and fertilization fusion of gametes to zygote forms zygote develops into embryo and then into a new individual structure of a typical flower the typical flower has four holes concentric rings which are the concentric rings of floral parts number one is calyx uh, or sepals they are non essential part second one is the corolla or petals they are also non essential part they help in uh, pollination property sepals or calyx hold the other holes in the plants and the third hole is the androecium which consists of stamens is the essential male reproductive part and the fourth hole is the gynoecium made up of carpels which is essential female reproductive part holes classification essential holes which are involved in reproduction like androecium that is the male part and gynoecium that is the female part and they are directly involved in gamete formation and fertilization or reproduction non essential parts they provide the most uh, crucial supportive role uh, they, are, uh, they are either cal their calyx and corolla they help attract pollinators but not directly involved in reproduction process important notes if androecium is absent or non functional the flower is called pistillate flower because there is only pistil or female reproductive part if gynoecium is absent or non functional then the flower is called staminate because there is only stamen as male reproductive part if both androecium and gynoecium are absent or non functional the flower is neither pistillate nor staminate they are neuter flower anther which produce the pollen grains which contain the male reproductive cell pollen grains are sticky to stick into the body of pollinators they are the male part and the filament which connect the anther to the flower petal it attracts pollinator usually brightly colored this is the petal which attracts the pollinators and sepals uh, it protects uh, flower bud this is the green part female part consists of stigma style and ovary stigma it receives the pollen grains style it connects the stigma to the ovary and ovary contains the ovules which develops into fruit after fertilization ovary is converted into fruit after fertilization and the ovule contains the egg cell and it develops into seed after fertilization so summary can be called said as flowers are complex reproductive structures sexual reproduction in flowering plants involve gamete formation pollination fertilization and embryo development the flower structure is divided into four holes which are classified based on their function in reproduction now we discuss what is pollination pollination is basically the process of transferring 
pollen grains or male gametes from the anther to the stigma of a flower. This flower enables the fusion of gametes ultimately leading to fertilization and seed formation. The poll pollination is basically two types, cell pollination and second one is the cross pollination. In case of cell pollination what happens? In cell pollination the pollen comes from the same pollen same plant, the pollen comes from the same plant and pollen from the anther is transferred to the stigma, stigma of the same flower or pollen is transferred to the stigma of another flower on the same plant, common in monoecious plants. Key features of cell pollination, no, no pollinating, pollinating agent like wind or insects is needed. Here flowers are genetically similar, it results in offspring with less variation in case of self pollination. But in case of cross pollination what happens? Pollen is transferred from the anther of one flower to the stigma of a flower on another plant of the same species. This is common in unisexual flower which is separate male and female flowers in, and even bisexual flowers which can undergo cross pollination. Key features of cross pollination it needs external pollination agents like insects, wind, water etc. Here results in offspring with greater genetic variation enhances adaptability and evolution. This is the image showing cross pollination. And now we will see what is artificial pollination. This is human assisted pollution, pollination and useful when natural pollution, pollination is insufficient or undesirable. Process pollen is manually transferred from the anther of one flower to the stigma of the same or different flower. It can be done using a small brass. This is the process of artificial uh, pollination showing by the image. No, no insects or weather is needed. Flowers are often covered with plastic bags to avoid unwanted pollination. It is also called as mechanical pollination or hand pollination. Summary points type cell pollination same flower or same plant it has low variation and no agent is required in case of cell pollination but cross pollination occurs between different plants with high variation and here agent is required agents like insects, wind etc. Artificial pollination is done manually by humans it is a controlled process and there no mechanical agent is required. So agents of pollination what are agents of pollination cross pollination uh, needs help from external pollinators and main pollinating agents are following wind, water, insects, birds, animals, etc. Entomophilus, they are the insect pollinated and anemophilus, wind pollinated, hydrophilus, water pollinated, ornithophilus, bird pollinated and these are the uh, types of agents of pollination. Biotic agents include bird, animal, insects and the abiotic agents include wind, water, etc. Entomophily, the insect pollination, these are the plants that depend on insects for pollination like bees, butterflies, etc. Floral adaptation in these flowers, they are large, bright colored and often scented to attract insects. Even small flowers are grouped in clusters to appear more noticeable. Anthers here are small and remain within the flower. They are attached firmly to filaments. Pollen grains are here sticky or spiny to cling to insect bodies. They are fewer in number as pollination is more targeted. Their stigmas are sticky, flat or club shaped to catch pollen easily. Examples China Rose, Petunia, Salvia, Pea, Sunflower, they are the examples of entomophilic flower. Now we um, say about, we discuss about the anemophily which is wind pollination. These plants rely on wind to carry pollen. The floral adaptation, the flowers are small and dull colored, they are not meant to attract insects. They are inconspicuous, no need for fragrance or nectar. Anthers are large, protruding and loosely attached show that they can easily release pollen. Pollen grains are smooth and lightweight for easy wind transport. They are produced in large quantities due to high chances of loss. They have, may have wing or extensions as in conifers to help float in air. Their stigmas are large, feathery and have hang outside the flower to catch airborne pollen. This is an example showing pollination in mage uh, tassel. The, the pollen is released on tassel is released. Some pollen grains land on uh, silk or female fertilize the seed and produce kernel. Summary table trait flower uh, showy colorful scented small dull no scent. Uh, anthers uh, in case of entomophily it is small inside flower and in case of anomophily it is large protruding. Pollen in case of entomophilus it can be sticky or spiny and less in number but in case of anomophilus they are smooth light and abundant. 
stigma that sticky and club shaped in case of entomophilus flower and uh, stigma is feathery and exposed in case of anemophilus flower here the in case of entomophilus the pollinator is the insects and in case of anemophilus the pollinator is the wind now we discuss about hydrophily or water pollination pollination in which pollen is dispersed by water it is uh, by wind or animals is not feasible under water aquatic plants have special adaptations like flowers may be above the water surface to enable pollination in some cases male flowers float on water until they contact female flowers example valisneria hydrilla etc ornithophily or bird pollination it is the pollination process carried out by birds here flowers are rich in nectar then bright red or orange color which birds are highly attracted to some plants have modified pitcher shaped nectar is to hold nectar advantages of self pollination and cross pollination advantages of self pollination the surer method for non self sterile homogamous flowers they maintain purity of the race they are useful for improved or high yielding varieties like wheat economical process their minimal pollen grain is wasted in this process in self pollination there no external pollinator is needed no energy spent on making attractive flowers like color nectar scent advantages of cross pollination they produces healthier more adaptive offspring they generates new varieties by combining traits from different plants which can lead to hybrids their seeds are more viable and abundant genetic diversity increases pace to evolution improves hybrid vigor and seed germination it is the image showing self pollination versus cross pollination now we discuss disadvantages of self pollination it leads to degenerative degeneration of race there is no genetic diversity seeds are weak offspring lack vigor no new varieties they, which are defects and weakness are retained in the plant little chances of improvement or in future generations disadvantage of cross pollination which is uncertain and depends on availability of pollinators which is uneconomical it requires large amounts of pollen much gets wasted pollen and plants must invest energy in making large colorful scented flowers they produce nectar and forming barriers to prevent self pollination now we, uh, this is the summary table uh, making the difference between self pollination and cross pollination we have already discussed about it now we study fertilization overview uh, fertilization occurs after pollination where uh, male and female gametes fuse it involves gynoecium or female reproductive part and androecium or male reproductive part the image showing the female reproductive part gynoecium also known as the pistil it includes stigma which is sticky terminal knob like part where pollen grains land style is the tube like structure that connects stigma to ovary ovary is the enlarged basal part contains ovule site of it is the site of fertilization and androecium is the male part which consists of multiple stamens each stamen has one filament it's a stalk that supports the anther and anther produces pollen it has two lobes each with two chambers or pollen sacs each sac has numerous pollen grains uh, size approximately 10 to 200 micron pollen grains have two layers exine outer layer and intine is the inner or grows into pollen tube pollen tube formation and double fertilization once pollen lands on the stigma here the pollens land on the stigma if germinates forming a pollen tube this is the formation of a pollen tube ha um, uh, through the style it it goes through the style uh, towards the ovary this is the ovary and more pollen grains contains two nucleus tube nucleus it controls the pollen tube growth generative nucleus divides into two male gametes and uh, or sperm cells pollen tube reaches the ovule via the micropyle which is the small opening tube nucleus disintegrates the two sperm nuclei are released into the embryo sac double fertilization in flowering plants one male gamete fuses with egg cell that forms the zygote and into embryo second male gamete fuses with the secondary nucleus which which is two polar nuclei triploid endosperm nucleus endosperm nourishes the embryo this is the summary androecium and gynoecium are key reproductive structures pollen tube carries the sperm to the ovule double fertilization is the unique to angiosperms which forms embryo and endosperm it results in seed and fruit development seed fruit and germination post fertilization changes after fertilization several changes occur like zygote converts develops into embryo ovule becomes the seed ovary develops into fruit endosperm nucleus forms endosperm which is a nutritive tissue for embryo other floral parts include calyx corolla stamen style stigma they wither away 
this is the post fertilization image in plants now what is a seed a seed is a mature ovule that contains a protective seed coat it's the image showing the seed coat a small pore or micropyle for water entry and embryo and in endosperm which is found in some seeds embryo structure it has cotyledons seed leaves storing food radical which develops into the root system and plumule which develops in the stem or shoot system types of seeds based on the cotyledons dicot seeds it contain two cotyledons example bean cotyledons are thick and store food called non endospermic seed where food is stored in cotyledon that is non not in endosperm monocotyledon seeds it contain one cotyledon example maize grain endosperm stores food cotyledon is thin called endospermic seed seed germination radical will develop into root system and plumule will develop the shoot or stem system seeds germination needs air that is oxygen water right proper temperature light and good soil conditions all right dear students that brings us to the end of the today's class on sexual reproduction in plants let's quickly recall what we learned we understand that reproduction is the process by which plants produce their young ones there are two main types sexual and asexual reproduction asexual reproduction happens without gamete and it include methods like binary fission budding and fragmentation spore formation regeneration vegetative propagation etc we also saw how vegetative propagation in 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 our previous class we have discussed about it the concepts are not only important for exam but also help us understand how life continues and multiple in nature thank you so much for watching and learning with me if you found this class helpful don't forget to like share and subscribe to support my channel feel free to drop your doubts or confusion thoughts in the comments below i will be happy to reply take care stay curious and i will see you in the next class biology is life keep exploring